Hello everybody, I am Dr. Armen, Professor Armen Astvatsadrian from Yerevan, Armenia, and today we will talk about, just in several several phrases, of course, uh, concerning the dimer. What is the dimer? The dimer, or the dimer, the dimer is one of the protein fragments produced when a blood clot gets dissolved in the body. It's normally undetectable, of course, or detectable at a very low level unless the body is formatting and breaking down blood clots. Then its level in the blood can significantly rise. The test de uh, detects dead dimer in the blood. When a blood vessel or tissue is injured and being to bleed, a process that we call hemostasis is initiated by the body to create a blood clot to limit and to eventually stop the bleeding. The process produces threads of a protein, uh, threads of protein called fibrin or fibrin, which cross link together to form a fibrin net. That net together with the platelets helps uh, hold the forming blood clot in place and the site of the injury until it heals. Once, uh, once the area uh, has had time to heal and the clot is no longer needed, the body uses an uh, enzyme called plasmin to break the clot thrombus into small pieces so that it can be removed. The fragments of the disintegrating fibrin in the clot are called fibrin degeneration products. FDF, fibrin degeneration products, which consist of variously sized pieces of cross-linked fibrin. One of the final fibrin degradation products produced is the dimer or the dimer, which can be measured in the blood sample when present. The level of the dimer in the blood can significantly rise when there is a significant formation and breakdown of fibrin clots in the body. For a person who is at low intermediate risk for blood clotting thrombosis and or thrombotic embolism, the strength of the dimer test is that it can be used in a hospital emergency room setting to determine the likelihood of a clot present. A negative, <coughs> sorry, the negative test, negative the dimer test, when the dimer level is uh, below a predetermined cutoff threshold, so a negative the dimer test indicates that is a highly unlikely uh, that a thrombus is present. However, a positive the dimer test cannot predict whether or not clot is present. It's an indicate that further diagnostic procedures are required. So ultrasound, computer tomography, angiography. Okay, positive the dimer test cannot predict whether or not clot is present now. There are uh, several factors and conditions associated with inappropriate blood clot formation. One of the most is a deep venous thrombosis, which involves clot formation in vein in veins deep within the body most frequently in the lower legs these clots may grow very very large and blood and block blood flow in the legs causing swelling pain and a tissue damage it's a possible for a piece of the clot of uh, to break off and travel to others of the body the embolus can lodge in the lungs causing a pulmonary embolus, embolus or embolism, pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolism from deep venous thrombosis affect more than 3,000 people only in United States, only United States each year. That you figure, can you figure that? While clots most common form, commonly form from, uh, from uh, in the vein, so while clots, while clots, most commonly form in the veins of the legs, they may also uh, form in other areas as well. Measurements of dead dimer can be used to help detect clots in any of these sites. For example, clots in coronary arteries are the cause of myocardial infarction. 
heart attack and myocardial infarction. Clots may form of the lining of the heart of its valve of the uh, heart of its valves. <coughs> okay, so clots may f uh, form on the lining of the heart of or its valves, particularly when the heart is beating irregularly, heart fibrillation, atrial fibrillation, or when the valves are damaged. Clots can also form in the later large artery as a result of narrowing and damage from atherosclerosis. Pieces of such clots may break off and cause an embolus that blocks embolus that blocks an artery in another organ, such as the brain, so causing a stroke, or <coughs> block the kidneys. Measurements of the dimer may also be ordered al along with other tests to help diagnose disseminate, disseminated intravenous coagulation, intravascular, sorry, intravascular co coagulation, disseminated intravascular coagulation, so DIC. Uh, DIC. So this DIC. Uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation is a condition in which clotting factors are activated and then used up throughout the body. Th this creates numerous tiny blood clots, at the same time leaves the affected person vulnerable to excessive bleeding. It's a complex, sometimes life-threatening condition, very often condition that can arise from a variety of symptoms, including some surgical procedures, sepsis, potion, po poisonous snake bites, liver disease, and after childbirth, childbirth. Steps are taken to support the affected person while the underlying condition resolves. The, di the, the dimer level will typically be very elevated in disseminated intravascular, intravascular coagulation. So, let's answer common questions of the um, dimer, te dimer test. So, why get tested? To help rule out clotting, thrombotic episodes, and to help diagnose conditions related to thrombosis. That, it, that is why get tested by the dimer. When to go tested by the dimer? When you have symptoms of a blood clot or a condition that causes inappropriate blood clots, such as deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, or disseminated intravascular coagulation, and to monitor treatment of uh, disseminated intravascular con uh, condition and excessive uh, clotting conditions. That is when to get tested by didymer. Sample required, um, a blood sample drawn from a vein in your arm. Just it. Test preparation needed? None. None. Absolutely none. Another, how is, how is the test used? How is the test used? So, the dimer tests are used to help rule out the presence of inappropriate clot, so thrombus. Some of the conditions that the dead dimer is used to help rule out include deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, stroke, this test may be used to determine if further testing is necessary to help diagnose diseases and conditions that, that cause hypercoagulability, hypercoagulability and tendency to clot inappropriately. A dead dimer level may be used to help diagnose disseminated intravascular coagulation and to monitor the effectiveness of DIC treatment of the disseminated intravascular, intravascular coagulation treatment. So, when it's, ordered, when it's ordered, good question, when it's ordered. The dimer testing is often ordered when someone goes to the emergency room with symptoms of uh, serious conditions, for example, chest pain and difficulty in breathing. A dead dimer test may be ordered when someone has symptoms of deep venous usually is one Leg, leg swelling edema, this uh, discoloration of the discoloration of the leg. So it may be ordered when someone has symptoms of pulmonary embolism, such as pulmonary embolism. Mentioned above, mentioned above was deep venous thrombosis uh, symptoms. Where, <coughs> so now it's uh, pulmonary embolism symptoms. Sudden shortness of breath, labored breathing, labored breathing. 
coughing, hemoptysis, blood present in sputum, hemoptysis, lung-related chest pain, rapid heart rate. Dead dimer is especially useful when a healthcare practitioner thinks that something other than deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism is causing the symptoms. Is a quick non-invasive way to help rule out abnormal or excess clotting as underlying cause. However, it should not be used when the probability or pulmonary embolism is high, high based on uh, or clinical assessment. When a person has symptoms of disseminated intravascular coagulation, disseminated intravascular coagulation, such as bleeding, gums, nausea, vomiting, severe muscle and abdominal pain, seizures, seizures, and decreased in urine output, Uh, the dimer must may be ordered along with uh, PT, PTT, fibrinogen, and platelet count to help diagnose the condition. The dimer is, may also be ordered at intervals when someone is undergoing treatment for deep uh, uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation to help monitor its progress. So what? does the test result mean? So a normal or negative dead dimer result, dead dimer level is below of a predeterminate cutoff threshold, so this negative dead dimer result means that it's most likely that the person doesn't, doesn't have an acute current condition of disease, of the, or disease causing abnormal clot formation and breakdown. Most health persons, uh, most health practitioners, sorry, uh, agree that the negative dead dimer is most valid and useful when the test is done for people who are considered to be at low or moderate risk for thrombosis. The test is used to help rule out clothing, 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 as the cause of symptoms. A positive dead dimer result may indicate the presence of an abnormally high level of fibrin degradation products. It indicates that there may be significant blood clots, thrombus, formation and breakdown in the body. But it doesn't tell the location of cause. For example, it may be due to venous thrombosis or disseminated intravascular coagulation. Typically, the dimer is very, very elevated in disseminated intravascular coagulation. However, an elevated dead dimer doesn't always indicate the presence of a clot because a number of other factors can cause an increased level. Elevated levels may be seen in conditions in which fibrin is formed and then broke down, such as recent surgery, trauma, infection, heart attack, and some cancers or conditions in which fibrin is not clearly normal, normally, such as liver disease. Therefore, Dead dimer is a typically is a typically not used to rule out uh, deep venous venous thrombosis. Uh, not used to rule out venous thrombosis in hospitalized patients, in patient setting. Fibrin is also formed and broken down during pregnancy, so that may result in an elevated dead dimer level. However, if uh, the dick is suspected, ah, disseminated intravascular con condition. <coughs> Sorry. So, <coughs> however, if a dick is suspected in a woman who is pregnant, uh, or is in the immediate postpartum period, postpartum period, then the diademer D-dimer, D-dimer, then <laughs> D-dimer test may be used along with PT, PTT, fibrinogen, fibrinogen, and platelet and platelet count to help diagnose her condition. In the woman, if the woman has a dick, her D-dimer level will be very elevated. Oh, disseminated intravascular condition. D-dimer is recommended as an as a junked test. Since, since dead dimer is a sensitive test but has a poor specificity, it should only be used to rule out deep venous thrombosis, 
not to confirm a diagnosis. It should not be used for pulmonary embolism when the clinical probability of that condition is high. Both increased and normal dead dimer levels may require follow-up and can lead to further diagnostic testing. People when people with positive dead dimer tests and those with, with moderate to high risk for deep venous thrombosis require further study with diagnostic imaging, for example, computer tomography, angiography. <clears throat> computer angiography when used when used to monitor uh, DIC treatment decreasing levels indicate that treatment of uh, is effective while increasing levels may indicate may indicate that treatment is not working so if there are anything else we have to know dead dimer concentrations rise in in the elderly and false positiveness positives and false positives may be seen with high levels of rheumatoid factor rheumatoid factor a protein seen in people with rheumatoid arthritis the dimer testing is not well studied in children so actually arthritis oh my god Art not arthritis or arthritis arthritis <sighs> There are several different methods in testing for dead dimer. The currently available dead dimer tests that yield quantitative results are typically done in hospital laboratories. Since different tests are used in different units, the result of one cannot be extrapolated to another. So what are some common risk factors for inappropriate blood clotting? Some risk factors include major surgery or trauma, trauma hospitalization or living in a nursing home yeah 